thousands of sharks. Silkies, white tips, hammerheads, hunt along the volcanic reefs of this tiny island in the Pacific. Acclaimed filmmaker Howard Hall and his crew have been diving at Cocos Island for more than a decade. Now, this may not be entirely safe. Ooh, look at those big boys. There's 50 sharks down there. Go. Yeah, go. Yeah, go. Yeah, no. Push no. them in. It takes all of their experience and knowledge to dive in these treacherous waters. Welcome to Shark Mountain. San Diego, California. This is the edge of our world. Along this thin line, America slips quietly into the vast Pacific Ocean. It's no place for humans out here, but it calls to us all the same. Yet only 1% of the ocean has truly been explored. Just an extraordinary few have risked its dangers and delved into its mysteries. Two of them are Howard and Michelle Hall. Their hours underwater in the most remote places on Earth add up to years. After more than 50 films, they're considered the best in the business. Right, we'll arrive on Wednesday night. But even for pros, and the work of exploring begins on the phone. At night and head up to Punta Arenas the next day. Right, three weeks, three weeks of diving. No, no, I never said two weeks. It's always been three weeks. As Michelle tackles the logistics, Howard organizes the gear, and he never travels light. Two cameras and nearly 40 cases of equipment must all be packed and shipped to one remote location or another. But lately, he's been finding that no place is quite as remote as it used to be. You know, there's really no place on the planet that's not being affected in some way by human population growth. So we feel like we're sort of on a quest to discover as much as we can, learn as much as we can about the marine environment, and capture this beautiful wilderness on videotape while we still can. Uh, we understand that we're sort of the privileged few that get to go there and see these things firsthand and, and it's wonderful and being able to share that with the rest of the world, um, we think that's important. This time, Howard and Michelle have agreed to show us how they do it. They've chosen a special spot a tiny outpost 300 miles into the Pacific off the coast of Central America, Cocos Island. Cocos was once the haunt of pirates. Now Howard and Michelle are seeking their own brand of treasure. Cocos is world famous for sharks. Cocos is a bit like Conan Doyle's Lost World. Not the island itself, but just beneath the waves. In an age where 90% of the large fish have been taken from the sea, you can still come to Cocos and find the ocean like it used to be. Hundreds, even thousands of sharks gather in the currents around the island. There's no place like it in the world. For some 10 weeks of filming, our home will be the research vessel Undersea Hunter. It's a comfortable boat, but you'd better be good friends with your crew. Besides, your life depends on them. 
25 years ago, Bob Cranston and I began filming sharks together off the California coast. He's been with me ever since. His diving and camera skills are extraordinary. Peter Craw spent years as a dive master in these waters and knows the treacherous currents that sweep past the island. I'll be relying on Peter to keep us out of trouble. Michelle seems an improbable undersea explorer. At barely 100 pounds, she's undersized for the heavy diving gear she must carry. In addition to organizing our expeditions, Michelle is a talented underwater still photographer and marine naturalist. Ocean life is so rich at Cocos that the island and a 12-mile zone all around it has been designated a Costa Rican National Park and World Heritage Site. No fishing is permitted here. Many of the large animals at Cocos are visitors, but most of the smaller species are permanent residents like this pair of courting pufferfish. Another resident, this blue-spotted jawfish, seldom ventures far from her den. Ocean currents bring her everything she needs. Because of these currents, almost every inch here is covered with life, and that makes Cocos both spectacular and dangerous. This is why divers come to Cocos. Often when I'm looking down at some small creature, a shadow is suddenly cast over the reef. A chill always goes down my spine before I raise my head to discover legions of hammerhead sharks passing overhead in schools so dense they blot out the sun. It's an experience that goes beyond awe. It's magical. Howard and his crew don't rely on ordinary scuba here. Instead, they use a more sophisticated system that emits no bubbles and won't run out of air. This is the diving gear we'll be using for the film. It's very different than standard scuba equipment. This is a closed circuit mixed gas rebreather. And it's very similar to the systems the astronauts use when they're in outer space. Uh, it basically, it takes the gas that you're breathing purifies it and recycles it, uh, and then you just rebreathe it, hence the, the name rebreather. This thing makes filming wildlife much more efficient underwater. It's very, very silent. It allows you to get closer to the marine life, and you can stay down for very long periods of time. Besides, it's got communications in it. So this is the uh, push to talk. It's kind of like talking with a bunch of marbles in your mouth, but however can understand me, I can easily understand him. Nobody can understand us. Exactly. And that's it. Cocos lies directly in the path of deep ocean currents. Their collision with the island can churn the waters into an undersea storm.